So we now get into the cell level, molecular level, to say what's the major difference. And we found that one process we call inflammation. When Lin Fa infected bat and human cells with the MERS virus, he discovered special genes in bats that reduced inflammation. It seems bats evolved ways to calm their immune system, preventing dangerous overreactions to viruses. My current hypothesis is why bats can be resilient for disease is that it's the evolution 65 million years ago. They acquired the fly capability. Ask yourself, if tomorrow morning you wake up and suddenly you can fly, how much change you have to make? Hand becomes a wing now, but that's a morphology change. More difficult is the cellular, molecular, biochemical change. It's a hotly debated topic, but these changes may have done more than just help bats tolerate viruses. They may also have led to viruses that are more deadly to humans. It takes a huge amount of energy for a mammal to be able to fly. So a bat's metabolism, or the process of turning food into fuel, has to be up to five times faster than other mammals their size. From the moment the bat takes off, the cells need to pump out a lot more power. But ramping up the metabolism also generates more heat. During flight, a bat's body temperature can skyrocket to 129 degrees Fahrenheit. Most viruses break down at high temperatures, but some manage to adapt and survive the punishing conditions inside a bat during flight. If these heat-adapted viruses find their way into human hosts, it's possible they're already a big step ahead of our defenses. The highest fever most of us can generate without killing ourselves is only 107 degrees Fahrenheit, giving the viruses a better chance of surviving and making us sick. Bats can fly, and that's super unusual for mammals. They live in lots of ecosystems, and they can move across vast distances. But these abilities also make them able to spread viruses.